is this invariant classification. So when you tell me that this orbit looks unstable in laboratory frame, if I go to some other frame, is it still going to be unstable? Can I stabilize it just by changing coordinates? You know, it's not obvious a priori. And now the beautiful, amazing thing that I want to spend some time on right now is that not only is this sign preserved by any choice of coordinates, but even the magnitude of these factors, exact values of this factor have invariant meaning. This is very important for us because when we do research, we have to agree with our colleagues whether we are looking at the same orbit. And one signature whether we have found same solution is to look at its period. Period actually depends on your clock. And it's quite legal to redefine time in all kinds of weird ways. Only thing that time does is it's giving you ticks along this orbit. And for example, when you're solving problems in celestial mechanics, like a comet going into the sun and coming out of the sun, so an ellipse which has infinitesimal width is long. This actually is solution of Newton equations of motion. It's Keplerian ellipse. And in those cases, it will be very hard to do it numerically, but you can redefine the time in such a way that you use different clock rate depending on how far you are from the center of mass of your system. And it works, you know, it's perfectly fine. So time is not sacred. And we are totally used to the idea that X, Y, and Z are not sacred because depending on the symmetry problem, you might prefer to do it in R theta phi. It's totally arbitrary. These numbers are invariant. Now the reason why they're invariant, I'll first draw a little picture and then do some algebra, but the picture is one that you're very used to. If I have my state space and you have your state space, and I have my coordinate, and you have your coordinate, then if these are the same dynamical space, then if point here is in M and your point is in uh, the redefined system, and then there is a mapping that tells me how I change these coordinates, tells me Y, H of X. And uh, this mapping, at least locally in some patch where I'm working, should be one-to-one -one diffeomorphism, so I should be going, able to go back and forth as I wish. You know, I should also be able to go back to x, saying this is h minus 1y. And now what happens is when I go back, you know, your coordinates look a little bit weird. I can think of this that transformation from one set of coordinates to other one is like taking a piece of rubber and stretching it so the things line up and the stretching and deformation is described by this H, and of course this happens in D dimensions, so it's, this is a big, big deal. And uh, this is called a smooth conjugacy. Conjugacy is any relation where I can go back and forth, so if I have set of points here, I can uniquely assign the set of point to them back and forth, but it can be something that's called topological conjugacy, in which case uh, people in a different department here love this stuff. So they're usually no place differentiable functions that tell you how you go from here to there. So they can be totally horrible. But we will insist that conjugacy is smooth so we can take derivatives of this map, at least one and hopefully all, but definitely at least one. When we are computing a Jacobian matrix, we are looking at an interval in this coordinates, dx i going in one way at zero. And then what dynamics does to that interval it goes around. And if this interval is attached to periodic point, then it will come back to us, all, you know, including the periodic point. So here is a periodic point x that has a property in our dynamic you come back after a period if it's on a, on a cycle. So what this matrix is doing, it's computing all the ratios between dx 
And this is our tax when it comes back. If you keep the point fixed and we stretch its neighborhood so it agrees with the neighborhood in, in the new coordinate system. So this is YP where uh, this particular point Y, well, it's given by this relationship. What we're doing is we're stretching the neighborhood and we do this only once. In a, we don't time t later stretch it differently. So the stretching of the two neighborhoods is the same. And in infinitesimal neighborhood periodic point, the stretching factors cancels. So you know that's the moral reason why this matrix will produce invariant quantities. But in detail, it doesn't really look like that because it turns out it's a similarity transformation. So that's the main idea. Now I'll work out the algebra for it. I'll do it in two steps. The first step is really the subset of the second one, but it looks a little bit different. The first thing that's comforting about periodic orbits is that Floquet exponents multiplier is the natural object for dynamics. Floquet multipliers same everywhere along the periodic orbit. So what's a Floquet multiplier on a periodic orbit? I take the matrix. I value it at point X, Jacobian matrix. I go around the full period. And I denote this by putting a subscript P. The multipliers and corresponding eigenvectors satisfy that eigenvector at point X just returns a number. So it's a property of prime orbit, but in this argument I'll omit the subscript and just say the ith multiplier. So that's a Floquet multiplier. Next, time. Evolution in time is an abelian group. What does that mean? You know, I showed a few lectures ago that uh, Jacobians have a group property that if you go for time t and then time t prime, having started at some point, that's the same as uh, a product. I go first time t prime, starting at my initial point, and then I go to the image on the trajectory. So this is x at time t, and this is x element of the periodic orbit. This is where I'm time t later. So that's a group property. Jacobians multiply along the floor. But this is just a real number, so you know so I can split it. I can write it as t prime plus t. So that's the same as going time t arriving and f t of x and going t prime. So that's a group and this is abelian group. Uh, I'm using uh, a shorthand notation and defining the particular Jacobian where I go the full period around, instead of writing it upstairs, I just write it with a label there. Because it happens so often, it's convenient. It's a kind of central object of the theory. For K multiplier, it's lambda. You know, usually you, you would put a subscript P here denoting belonging to a particular orbit. For K exponent, I have erased, but it's a logarithm divided by time. I can uh, multiply both sides of this equation by J T. This is a matrix. We evaluated it at the point X on the periodic orbit. At that point, matrix is a bunch of values, D by D values. So this is a complete set of eigenvectors. If we go to some other point, matrix changes and the eigenvectors change. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm saying that if I compute it at any point on the cycle, I know it every place. Multiply both sides by Jx primes, E i x plus lambda i. Uh, 
I want to use uh, the period. I'll make one of these guys T. And I'll call this point X prime. Go time T from X be an X prime, the period. Because we only have one prime cycle, I'll forget the subscript for a while. This is the same as JT, go whole cycle around. I'll uh, let you digest this for a while. The point is, because the orbit is periodic, you know, I end up at the initial point after period T, so here I advance from the initial point. But I can rewrite this as initial point going finite time and then the whole period at X prime. That's the whole trick. So I multiply these guys using this formula. Here I use my uh, relation that this can be written as TP Jacobian at X multiplying what I'll call uh, uh, tilde I of X equals lambda I E I of X but this tilde object is just the initial vector simply transported finite time T by the finite time Jacobian. We find that computed any place along the periodic orbit we have the same equation with same multiplier and that's not really obvious because you know, when you go around the periodic orbit, there could be lots of stretching here. You know, it could be really wild around here. And maybe it could be very boring down here. As it often happens in time in human relationships and other things. So, uh, you know, a priori it's not obvious that computing deformation here and the formation in the quiescent period will give you the same ratio. So that's a very comforting, nice result. That if you solve your eigenvalue problem any place on the loop, you know the eigenvector. It's being covariantly transported along the loop just by Jacobian itself, which you know how to compute. The multiplier is an invariant property just of periodic orbit of the whole set. Uh, even though you compute it in, in particular coordinates. So that's the first nice result.